Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I've got my annual roundup of sunscreen testing for the year. So I'm so excited about this video. I always put it out in May in honor of Skin Cancer Awareness Month. And sunscreen is one of the most important weapons that we have against skin cancer. So it's really important to wear your sunscreen every single day so that you can prevent skin cancer later in life or really any time in life and it's also really important to wear sunscreen every day because the sun's rays cause 90% of the photo aging that we see on our skin and I don't think there's anybody out there who wants to voluntarily look older than they are and one way to keep your skin healthy and youthful looking is to wear sunscreen every single day but I know that a lot of people don't like sunscreen they feel like it's heavy it's greasy it can leave a white cast and so they just don't use it so my quest over the last six years has been to test as many sunscreens as I can to find ones that are really wearable over these six years I've tested almost a hundred sunscreens <laughs> so I've tested a lot but I'm very particular about what I'm going to use. I'm like you, I don't like them to be gross so that I don't wear them and so I have found some faves. So I've tested another 12 sunscreens this year. They're all on the shelf over here behind me and we're going to see if any of those are better than the sunscreens that I've found over the last couple of years that have become my holy grails and those are on the shelf right up here behind me. When I find a new sunscreen that I like better, it doesn't mean that I stop using any of those. I still have them in my arsenal, but they might be used for different purposes. Like one might be water resistant, and so that's the one that I'll wear to the beach. So I use only 100% mineral sunscreen on my skin, and that's because the chemical sunscreening agents that we have available here in the United States irritate my skin. So when I put them on, I get this like stinging, burning sensation around my eyes. There are only two mineral sunscreening ingredients. Those are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. So those will be the two ingredients in all of the sunscreens that I'm going to show you today, except for two that aren't 100% mineral, and I'll be sure to let you know which two those are. But what you'll notice when I'm putting it on is that I put on a ton of sunscreen and I use about a quarter teaspoon for my face and my neck and that's because sunscreen is really dose dependent just like any medication so you know if you have a headache and you only take an eighth of an aspirin it's generally not going to get rid of your headache right well the same thing holds true for sunscreen so if you're using an SPF of 50 and you're using like a pea size amount for your whole face you're actually getting more like an SPF of 6 and is that really what you're going for? I doubt it, but a lot of people don't know that about sunscreen, that it is dose dependent. Anyway, I could go on and on about the proper way to apply sunscreen, but let's just suffice to say that you have to put on a lot and so you'll see me doing that. So these are the 12 contestants vying for a chance to be my new Holy Grail sunscreen. I'm gonna talk about them in order from worst to best. All right, so coming into the contest at the bottom spot, the worst sunscreen for this year is Super Goop Play 100% Mineral Lotion Sunscreen. This is an SPF 50. It retails for $32 for 3.4 ounces. It's 2% titanium dioxide oxide and 24% zinc oxide. It's non-nano, reef safe, and water resistant to 80 minutes and vegan. This is a thick white cream that goes on with a purplish tint and it's very difficult to rub in. It feels really greasy, really heavy, and really thick. It's not good around hair and left a strong white cast that's patchy and very shiny, but at least it's fragrance free. After 20 minutes of dry down, it looks exactly the same and it feels so oily and wet that it's just gross. I really hated it. It's completely unwearable, so I didn't even try it under makeup. All right, second to worst this year is from Naturally Serious. It's their Mineral Sun Defense Moisturizer Sunscreen in SPF 30. This retails for $32 for two ounces. It contains 4% titanium dioxide, 25% zinc oxide. It's not water resistant. This is a slightly tinted whipped up lotion with a really strong lemony citronelle kind of scent. 
It rubs in fairly quickly, but feels super greasy and has a really shiny finish. But it's good around hair. After 20 minutes, it still feels sticky and greasy, and it's still really shiny. My face still has a slight pale cast, and it still smells just like Lemon Pledge. Yeah, it's giving the littlest bit of white cast, but it's generally see-through. There's no problems with the hair or anything, but it just feels so gross on my skin. I don't like it at all. Next up is from Dr. Dennis Gross. It's their Instant Radiance Sun Defense SPF 40. This is $42 for 1.7 ounces. It's got 4.9% titanium dioxide, 4.42% zinc oxide, it is not water resistant, and it is cruelty free and vegan. This is a thick tinted cream that takes a bit of work to rub in. The tint is a medium tan color, but it goes on looking lighter and lighter the more you rub it. It feels thick and heavy and greasy on the skin. It has a strong smell that isn't a fragrance, it's just the smell of what it's made of. It's got a really shiny finish and is not good around hair. After 20 minutes of drying time, the tint lightens up even more, giving a pale cast to the skin. It still feels thick, sticky, and greasy. It really looks awful. It looks streaky, it looks patchy, and it's settled into wrinkles and pores. It is completely unwearable on its own. All right, next up is Trader Joe's Zinc Oxide Sunscreen Lotion SPF 40. This is $17.99 for five ounces. It's 20.5% zinc oxide, 40 minutes water resistant. It's non-nano and vegan. This is a heavy, thick white cream that goes on a lot like diaper cream. It's difficult to rub in, taking extra time to get it on there. It leaves a slight white cast and is not good around hair. It feels thick and greasy. It's fragrance free though, and after 20 minutes, it still has the white cast and looks uneven and very shiny and still feels very greasy. It's not wearable on its own. I did put makeup on over it, but the makeup doesn't really stick to it very well and it goes on looking paler than normal. The white cast shows through and it causes major settling into wrinkles right away. Next up is Suntegrity Impeccable Skin Moisturizing Face Sunscreen SPF 30. This is $55 for two ounces. It's 15% zinc oxide, it's not water resistant, but it does protect from blue light and it's cruelty free. This is a thicker, tinted, creamy sunscreen with no fragrance. It comes in six shades and I'm using the shade Sand here. It takes a little more work to rub this in, but it does blend well around hair. The tint hides any white cast and goes well with my skin tone. This felt really, really greasy and thick and has a very shiny finish. After 20 minutes, it still feels greasy and sticky. I don't like how it feels at all. And it's too shiny for me to wear on its own. This has had more like 30 minutes to set up because I was doing something else. And um, this is still really greasy and really sticky feeling. It's not bad looking except for the shine, like the color is all right. With makeup, it still feels really thick and really greasy and makes the makeup look thick and cakey and waxy because of the shine. All right, I feel like the stickiness and the shine is coming right through the makeup. It ugh, feels so not dry and not set. I can't take it. I used a boatload of powder to tone down the shine and it's still really shiny. So this one, I just, I, I just personally wouldn't wear it. I'll see how it wears under the makeup just to test it for you guys, but bleh, don't like it. All right, so those were the worst of the sunscreens that I tested this year. The next bunch is kind of middle of the road. These were good alone, but not good under makeup. So these sunscreens would be good if you don't wear makeup. They would be good for men or teenagers that you're trying to get to wear a sunscreen or even children, although some of them are pretty expensive to slather on your babies because babies don't really care what it looks like. Um, so first up in this category is Supergoop Zinc Screen SPF 40. This is $42 for 1.7 ounces. It's 13% zinc oxide. It's not water resistant, but it is reef safe and vegan. Hmm, interesting. 
<laughs> why they would make it not water resistant but reef safe okay whatever this one is a lightly peach tinted runny lotion that glides over the skin and rubs in really easily it's fragrance free and good around the hairline it feels lightweight but also pretty oily on the hands and the face with a shiny finish but no white cast after 20 minutes, Ew. it still feels Ew. oily and damp, but the shine has decreased a little bit. If you don't mind the feel and like the shiny finish, it could be really wearable on its own for you. Under makeup, the shine comes through, which accentuates pores and texture. Makeup doesn't sit very well over it, and it looks broken up on the surface with less coverage than normal. It causes major settling in wrinkles within five minutes, and it shortens the wear time of makeup by at least a couple of hours. It's okay on its own, but it is bad under makeup. Next up is Thrive Daily Defense Sunscreen Balm. This is an SPF 30. It's $20.95 for two ounces. It's 20% zinc oxide. It's not water resistant. It's non-nano and reef safe. This is a slightly grayish lotion with a strong lemon scent that takes a bit of work to rub in. It doesn't glide over the skin, but once rubbed in, it looks fairly sheer and there are no problems around hair and it has a soft, luminous finish. After 20 minutes of dry down, it looks good, but also like my skin is red and irritated from the botanicals, it does dry back and feels set. It would be wearable on its own. Makeup look nice from a distance, but not up close. Makeup doesn't sit right on top of the sunscreen. It looks mottled and broken up on the surface and looks heavier than normal. The makeup looks shinier and oilier at the four hour check-in than it usually does and much more worn off at eight hours where usually I get 10 hours of good wear out of this makeup with my regular sunscreens. So this one is wearable on its own and just okay under makeup. All right, next is one of the ones that is not all mineral. This is Dermatology Broad Spectrum 45. It's $19.95 for two ounces. This one is 12% zinc oxide and 7.5% octanoxate. This is a white lotion that goes on with a purplish white cast and it does leave that cast on the skin. It feels really greasy going on and has a luminous finish. After 20 minutes, it dries a bit, but still feels a little tacky and a little greasy, but the white cast is diminished and it's not overly shiny, so I think it is wearable on its own. The sunscreen doesn't ever dry down completely though, so makeup doesn't dry and set either. Foundation goes on sheerer than normal and the white cast and luminosity come through the foundation. The good news is the sunscreen doesn't make the foundation settle into wrinkles, but other than that, it just doesn't look or feel great and shortens the wear time of makeup. Up next is Purito Centella Green Level Unscented Sun SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 plus. This is $18.90 for two ounces. This is not a mineral sunscreen. There's no zinc oxide, no titanium dioxide in this. This one uses the European or Asian sun filters that we don't have in the US. It has Juvenal A plus and Juvenal T150. I don't know how much though because other countries aren't required to disclose the amount on the label. This comes out of the tube a slightly greenish lotion but does go on clear. It's very easy to rub in and it has no fragrance. And it's good around the hairline but it does have a slightly greasy feel. After 20 minutes of dry down it feels a little tacky but it's not that bad. It's clear with only a slight luminosity, but it seems to be a little irritating to the skin around my eyes, which is now red and blotchy looking, but it feels fine. It doesn't feel like it's stinging me, and I did try to wear this three or four days in a row to see if I had any stinging from it, and I didn't. So makeup goes on over it just okay. I tried it with three different foundations and each one went on the same. They were all a little patchy and broken up on the surface and the makeup just didn't sit well on top of this sunscreen no matter what I used. It didn't cause any settling into wrinkles or pores though and it looked nice from a distance but not up close. 
It did shorten the wear time of the makeup by a few hours, but overall it was very wearable on its own, but not great under makeup. Next category is not good on its own, but good under makeup, because sometimes that happens. <laughs> There's only one in this category. It is Clinique Pepstart Daily UV Protector Tinted SPF 50. This is 1950 for one ounce. It's 6.3% titanium dioxide, 4% zinc oxide, and it's not water resistant and it is unscented. This is a thin, runny lotion with a soft peachy tint. It rubs in easily and quickly, leaving a slight white cast, but it's really greasy feeling and it's really, really shiny. It's good around the hair. After 20 minutes of dry down, it still feels super greasy and does still have the slight white cast and is still ridiculously shiny. But I went ahead and put makeup on over it anyway because it is supposed to be kind of like a primerish base. And sure enough, it looks great under makeup. It looks natural and skin-like and the shine doesn't come through. It didn't shorten the wear time of the makeup at all and it still looked really good at the end of the day. So this one, not wearable on its own unless you like something with a lot of shine and a little bit of a white cast, but really, really good under makeup. All right, the last category and what I'm always looking for in all the sunscreens, something that looks good on its own and also looks good under makeup. So the first one in this category is from Strivectin. It is their advanced SPF full screen SPF 30. It's $39 for 1.5 ounces. It has 16% zinc oxide. It is not water resistant. It's non-nano and reef safe. It offers pollution and blue light defense. This is a lightly tinted thin lotion. It glides over the skin and is very easy and very quick to rub in. It has a light lemony fragrance that dissipates fairly quickly. There's no white cast and it goes on really well around the hair. It feels lightweight and not greasy. My hands didn't even feel greasy. And it has a soft luminosity that I really, really liked. After 20 minutes, it feels dry and set and it looks great. It's very, very wearable on its own and I was so excited about it. With makeup, it also looks really good. It doesn't affect the application or the look of the makeup to start. But sadly, it did make the makeup settle into wrinkles a little bit more than usual after about four hours. And it shortened the wear time of the makeup by a couple hours and it felt a tiny bit dry by the end of the day. So a very wearable sunscreen that's pretty good under makeup. All right, and now on to this year's winner, which it is a winner, I think, for people with dry skin who really loved the Australian Gold Botanical Face Tinted SPF 50 because that is an awesome sunscreen, but it can be very drying to the skin. And so this year's winner is much more hydrating. So this year's winner is CeraVe Hydrating Sunscreen Sheer Tint SPF 30. It's $13.97 for 1.7 ounces. It contains 5.5% titanium dioxide and 10% zinc oxide. It's not water resistant. It's a tinted lotion with a whipped up texture. It's easy to apply and rubs in quickly and easily, leaving no white cast and no problems around hair. The tint doesn't show as a tint so much, but it really hides the white cast very well. It does feel greasy on the face and the hands, but it does dry back a bit after 20 minutes, so it doesn't feel heavy, but it never quite sets either. It has a nice luminous finish. It does contain the usual CeraVe hydrating ingredients. Liquid makeup goes on well over it and it doesn't cause any settling into wrinkles or pores, but it did shorten the wear time of makeup by three or four hours. It looks really great under powder makeup though. So it's very wearable on its own and it is pretty good under makeup. But since it is an SPF 30 and it's 
not a hundred percent great under makeup where it shortens the wear time of the makeup a little bit for me i'm going to be sticking with my elta md as my favorite everyday sunscreen but for people with really dry skin i think that this could be really great and you might have different results than me because if your skin is drier then you know your makeup might adhere to it better and last a little bit longer so those are the 12 sunscreens that's my roundup for this year unfortunately i didn't find anything that was really a knock it out of the park 100 percent home run. The links to all of them will be in the information box below the video as well as the link to my running list of all the sunscreens that I've tried over the six years that's over on my blog. So that's it for today's video everybody. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.